Hello, what is happening everybody and welcome to today's cast. This one was kind of a uh, kind of a panic cast. I picked this off of um, Dota 2 Reddit. We're pretty much out of replays there, by the way. Um, so if you have some awesome replays, check the annotation in the top right corner. Just go submit your replays. We're, we're running sh low on the mess of right now. We're too many casters and too few replays. Plus, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Always got to remember, remember to say this because we're so gosh darn close to 50. And if we want to build a community that I know a lot of you want, um, we need subscribers. We need people who are more willing to join us, to join our cause. If you don't know what I'm about and what this entire channel is actually dedicated to, go check out my vlog last Sunday. But nevertheless, we got a game in our hands and it's gonna be Ursa and Slark picked off right off picked up right off the bat. Excuse me, my English has not been very cooperative today and neither is my throat. It's still kinda sore from the little sick leave I had uh, last week and I've not given it a chance whatsoever to recover. I have been doing casts constantly and constantly just re-smashing my um, my throat but here we go yeah weaver omni knight uh enigma ursa and slark so far so this is um gonna be very very um these don't say that the dire team currently is semi well balanced and omni knight is just plain annoying to play up against so i'll say that radiant are um, in pretty good condition as of right now But yeah, still just waiting for the uh, for the final for the final picks to come in. I'm gonna say Weaver as of right now, off lane in the jungle, or maybe it's the Ursa because this right line lineup right here is already pretty greedy. Shadowfiend now picked up. He's probably gonna be the mid hero off of this Radiant team. Horden Hordeon is gonna be having his way on him. I'm just gonna kind of skip ahead because. The drafts usually are not the most exciting thing about all of this. But nevertheless, here we go. We are in and we are ready. And I got my HUD changed. Which is something I like to have it this way. I'm probably going to go ahead and make a new one as soon as we get everything rolling and everything set up. Um, but as of right now, this one is the one I use for UGC. And it's the one I'm going to be using for this cast as well, so... But on the Radiant side, we do have her here, here, 142 on the Slark, on the Shadowfiend, Hordeon will be up on the mid with him. Dusa, as of right now, actually going bottom lane, uh, joining the Slark, so they're going to be competing for farm, call me Annie, is on that little snake, uh, it Mike Mikel TV, I'm not entirely sure, that right, that right there looks uh, rather Spanish, so. Not gonna try to pronounce that, but Omni Knight up on top lane with the axe and take a look at that mighty armor. That is the new set out in the new chest. And that looks absolutely amazing. And he should have a blink dagger on his side. He does. So on the dire side we have Fal Falvian on the Enigma so far. Skeeper on the faces for just hiding in the tree line. Um, Waiting for that first rune to spawn. We got the Weaver down on bottom lane also with a pretty cool set there. He will be played by some Arabic letters. And Bojo Bog? I'm not entirely sure what this, why Swind Ranger is actually going mid. And Dusa and Weaver are going to be uh, duking it out here starting out. This right here should be a battle that the Weaver might go ahead and win. He does have his Akuchi and that right there should be first blood. <laughs> kind of a, a bit of a messy... Messy fight starting out there, but nevertheless, Reaver getting the win. Taking the win off of that one. And last but not least, Ail died, 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 is on the Ursa. And he looks to be Jungle Ursa. Um, I'm not really sure why he got Tango, so naturally went for Salve, but that is something that is supposed to be going beyond me. Also, having the Wind Ranger mid instead of the Weaver kind of makes it a bit more weird. And as of right now, Sweeper, Faceless Void taking a lot of damage. He did go Bash first instead of going for Time Walk, so he's very, very vulnerable towards this axe. And Weaver solo on the off lane. I can really understand that. It's a common strategy to do. It's just a matter of um, farming priority. And currently, Void is sitting on level 1. It's getting forced back quite a bit. It's actually able to get the uh, Malphys off there in the Enigma. Just 
handing a bit of damage out to him. But this top lane is really, really intense here starting out. And Windranger is currently doing an excellent job on mid, actually. Keeping the Shadow Fiend in check. Now on the bottom lane, with that extra... Uh, oh, Weaver might be in a bit of trouble here. He does have his Coochie Pounce, not gonna connect. He might go for the return kill there. He is actually going to, and there you go, but... Slark, he should be faster. He is by a small margin, but there is his Coochie up in two seconds. One, and he's back out. Well played there by Weaver. And actually, up on top lane, they have gotten forced back quite a bit by this axe. This looks to be a, a very, very high pushing lane. Of course, Omni Knight and Axe synergizing super well together. Um, with the Berserker's Call into Purification, especially up against those melee heroes like Void, Nurse, and Axe. That's apparently, that's apparently going for it. I mean, he's almost getting bored here. He's gonna try to chase. He's gonna get Malthus. And it's just gonna back off. <laughs> uh, they're already having trouble dealing with each other down this bottom lane. They are two very, very heavy farmers down there. Don't really understand why they didn't put the axe in the jungle and just have the um, Slark, Slark solo lane, and then have uh, have Dusa backed up down the bottom. I'd say that would be a pretty good trade-off. Because Void and Enigma, they're not super gankers. Not super good gankers. Enigma can be, but it all depends on how you play him. But Ursa just literally just sitting back for now. Has got nine last hits, which is not amazing. And now Void gonna come and steal some of his farm. He can't even handle that that amount of farm, that amount of creeps. Down the bottom, this Weaver is getting properly big. If you take a look at his experience per minute, it is uh, looking rather decent. Now trading blows with the Slark, and you gotta know that Weaver. He's not really that good up against a guy like him. Slark getting a few hits in there. Just trading blows for now. He does have his Kuchi up on the ready. And that's the weakness of Slark. Almost getting him. There it is. Creeps finishing him off. And oh, the snake. Gonna leave him with 2 HP. Do so. All she needs is one hit, but they're equally fast. Oh, that is unfortunate. Oh, that is so unfortunate. Oh, wow. Unfortunate Medusa there. Weaver is playing right to the edge. And trash talk coming out left and right here. Axe actually taking jungle there. The Nygma just uh, farming that lane. They might want to try to go for a rotation in autumn. There is enough for purification, but for now, Axe just clearing the creep waves. Trying to prevent this push from happening, and he's doing a good job of it. Oh, the trash talk is unreal down here in bottom lane. These two. Carries cannot get along whatsoever. Dude's uh, trying to run from the from the Weaver down here. He is already level four. His experience per minute is rather decent. Um, he has been absent for quite a lot. His last hits are none, and he's pretty much got more kills than anything else. Apparently, that's what he's been focusing on. I'm not entirely sure why, but now the rotation is coming in. Axe is sitting up there. There's actually a courier right there. With the Ursa, but now the rotation is coming in on Wind Ranger, and that should be an easy pick off for the Omni Knight. Ouchie. Oh, there aren't a whole lot of wards for this, uh, for this stuff. Like, neither team has gotten a whole lot of wards. There it is. That's Nick Man getting a second ward, but Axe might just run in on him. Right in, right, run right on into him. He's gonna try to go for the chase, but of course, those boots are gonna make it a bit difficult down the bottom lane. We'd be getting another kill, but we're gonna wa be watching this chase, which is probably not gonna amount to anything, and. Makes me look terribly silly, but nevertheless, Dusa dying down the bottom lane too. The Weaver once again, he's on. He's got four kills so far. Yikes! Has not even gone for time lapse. It's kind of surprising. Does want to keep Mana on his Sukuchi. But yeah, Shadowfiend now taking over the last hit board. After that little gank there, Wind Ranger kind of, um, kind of dropped the ball. If you will, and apparently these are Russian servers. That does explain quite a lot. So we will be seeing a lot more trash talk in the coming minutes. Slug getting forced back once again. X retort. X retort told me to line against Weaver and now complains. Superb up on top lane. We do have a kill there. Axe just taking names down there and void. 
might actually be in trouble. The speed is not there. Actually, it is because Void has not even gotten boots yet. There is the Berserker's Call. It is kind of latched, but too early on the initiation there from the, uh, or purification there from Omni Knight. It's just going to give the uh, tower a nice little courtesy bashing. Rotation is coming back in from the Enigma. Is he going to be able to get the Malphys off? He is. But the, but the Medusa has actually rotated in. Down from the bottom lane, Shadow Fiend dying on mid to the Wind Ranger. But unfortunate snake bounce is not really going to help have this mount a whole lot. Now Axe coming back in is going to disengage to not have the health too. He does have it for the Void, however. If he wants to, he can possibly go for it. He is pinging it out. Dusa needs to be there. Otherwise he can't. There is not enough damage in that helix and his own damage to actually take out this Void in time. Is there a time walk on available? There is by not a very, very big margin. It's actually just teasing him for now. But there is no Dusa, and he's oh, he's going to be time walking very, very short. And should have actually been able to take him. Ursa now wanting to get in on the action. Just triggered uh, overpower very, very prematurely. Oh, unfortunately, only one County Helix coming off the back of that. And Ax should die, and he is going to. But with no help from the Dusa, it's a. Uh, Tough going for anyone. Shackle perfectly landed and Deuces should fall off the back of this, definitely. Easy pickoffs from the uh, Wind Ranger. So she's got two kills to her name as of right now, and um, Void has managed, to, has managed to cheat death so many times. Slug. With the. Um, only now actually getting his uh, Ring of Aquila. Only died once down about a lane. Deuce died four times so far, so. Has no farm whatsoever. Her GPM is absolutely dreadful. The Shadow Fiend currently uh, taking the cake here on, on mid lane, even though that he's been having trouble. And now Axe coming in on the Weaver. That did latch. Unfortunately, there is a time lapse of it available. Able to make it back out with that. Good reaction time there. Now Wind Ranger coming off the back. They're actually getting a Courier Snipe. And Weaver just trying to run away. There is no Berserker's Call for in the next couple of seconds. And Weaver should be able to pick off the Shadow Fiend off the back of this. And now they might want to try to go and turn their attention towards the axe. Void coming back in, he does not have a Chronosphere, but does have a Time Walk. Not gonna choose to commit it though. And there's the Omni Knight rotation. It doesn't let them know they've seen him. But yeah, Shadow Fiend dying once again, and that's gonna set his farm back quite a bit. Actually, Weaver is sitting on the most gold, but he has also gotten about five kills for starting off, and 10 last hits now. Weaver is gonna fall to the axe. Nice combination there, Void going for the Chrono. Definitely actually a good chrono trapping them within the midnight pulse. Just on the edge of it. Wind Ranger. Now having actually trouble coping with the um Shadow Fiend's damage and nice little ulti there keeping uh keeping Shadow Fiend alive. And the purification as well. Which would technically destroy him if you um, would look at it lower wise. <laughs> but nevertheless, despite Weaver's death, he's still the uh Third highest on um, on net worth. Actually, just Axe beating him by a very, very small margin. He has almost gotten his hands on a Blink Dagger. But yeah, the push is imminent here, and they are not in position to fight it. I'll probably just go up, take a bit of the tower, and then run back out again. We were pushing in bottom lane, though. They might want to have to pay attention to that. An Axe farming jungle, or not Axe, Slark farming jungle for now. His experience per minute is not super good to say the least and Weaver just chilling around down on bottom lane he could benefit from the last point Kuchi. Ursa feeling ready to take on Roshan and possibly is he is looking rather good here right off the bat he does have that right there should be the rest of his Vladimir's offering that's actually a Mask of Madness it's just located for Ursa now in mid lane they are pushing it in so if they trade a Rose for a tower I'm not saying that's entirely entirely good plus Ursa having trouble dealing with the damage the Roshan, but there it should be. That should be the definitive blow. And the Iron Branch drop. That or the TP. I'm not entirely sure what he did decide to deny. But nevertheless, he does have an Aegis now. So should have a uh, have a good time. Trying to take on this Weaver down the bottom lane. was actually being jumped by Slark. Slark trying to go for the... Uh, Counter build there. Oh, bad time lapse. Not gonna dodge the dog pack and might fall. He is definitely gonna, but of course, no experience going towards Slark because he was dead when he died. 
as you can see, experience change. Definitely the way of the weaver. Yep, the way of the weaver. Sorry about that. That was rather unfortunate. Actually, gold change going the way of weaver as well. That right there should be a uh, tire fallen. Oh, I done done goofed. Forgot that the Urson was on the Dire team as soon as he started uh, taking on the Radiance jungle. I apologize for any confusion I might have caused, but we do have a chase on our hands. Ursa trying to run away. And it's gonna be a blue. Actually popping the overpower just for that. Nice little courtesy overpower there. But yeah, it has something to do with I am with the fact that I am like tired out of my mind at this point. Um, it's been a long day, but nevertheless, this is something you gotta do. It is also experience. Everything is experience. We got a rotation coming in from bottom. Enigma does not have mana for black hole. A soul ring should be able to handle it, but it's gonna get forced back. Ooh, Invis rune out on Enigma. He can do some clutch plays here. Nice little shackle there. There is the black hole. Gonna catch four of them. All four. And Omni Knight. Not gonna be able to get the Guardian Angel off. Now they, the entire, just the damage being dealt. Everything is going the way of Dire as of right now. That team fight was huge. That black hole was amazing. Axe just managing to save the Slark. Why is he not just running away. If they're gonna pick him off, it could be a disaster. He does have a pounce and also the dark pact or the shadow dance to heal back up of. But that right there was a total disaster for the dire side or for the radiant side. They just got dominated in that fight. Beautiful black hole by Enigma. Catching all four of them. Yeah, zero wards. That is true, but when you have um when Enigma is invis, that's pretty much what happens. Also, when you're playing around with um, four carries, you know, it's a lot. It's not a lot to expect. You know, you can't really expect wards once you're playing around with this. Actually, Weaver taking quite a bit of damage from the Shadow Fiend, and there's the Donk out from Axe, and that is actually going to give them the speed boost that they needed. Shadow Fiend trying to bottle up as the Ursa is uh, chasing him. He does have the extra movement speed, but I don't think he wants to go with a war with, a war with, an, a, uh, with an SF. Like, no matter how low health he is. Okay, he's actually not attacking all that fast just yet. But nevertheless. We do have a lot of trash talk, and actually Medusa has been responsible for one-fourth of the, um, or one third of the deaths on this team so far. Her farm is dreadful. Her net worth is terrible. Her experience per minute is not very good. So call me Andy. You're not doing very good as of right now. Oh, nicely done. Axe taking advantage of a void being not really that observative and, or observant. And we were just gonna come in and take the farm now. Axe. Shackles are out. He is in a bad spot, and there is no blink available for the last couple, for, for the next couple of seconds. It's going to be able to juke the swarm, and not actually the Wind Ranger. She should be able to get a good shackle off once that's back up and running. It is. It's going to pop it right there, and the damage is going to be too much. And actually, Ursa dying down a bottom lane to the um, to the Shadow Fiend. So he's getting a, a nice little kill to his name there. And the trash talk coming out across the teams now also. This is one intense game. Oh wow. Shadow Fiend. Getting his uh, hands on the Shadow Armulet. Or Arm... Yeah, Armulet. Amulet. Amulet? Alright, I, my English just died on me there, but... Never mind that. There is a... Uh, was a haste rune out on Shadow Fiend. I don't really know why I popped it. And I'm not entirely sure what the Ursa is trying to, like, accomplish with that. Like, trying to just say Desolator. 50-minute Desolator. I'm not entirely sure what this is all about. People are just trying to outdo each other. 
and Enigma. Just a casual guy, chilling with his black hole and not really making a fuzz about himself. He looks a lot less, or a lot more scary without the, uh, actually, the glowing eyes. I use in you Abyssal and kill. Alrighty then. But now, Medusa, the black hole is there, and there is the late rotation of Mursa. And that right there should be an easy kill. Yep, was definitely. Ouch, she do so. Trying to go for the stone gates. Does not even have mana shield yet. What is this? What is this madness? There is an axe pushing in mid, however. He does almost have his hands on the blade mail. Has died quite a lot, though. Pretty much Slark and Omni Knight are currently the, uh, the only ones really keeping their path own path clean. Shadow Fiend has taken a few beatings, but is not really trying for too much trash talk. Weaver getting his hands on the Perseverance, but he's going to get jumped by Axe. And that right there should be a safe donk if he could get it off. Nice little shackle there from Wind Ranger, enabling the Weaver to get the time lapse off. There, the, the, there's the swarm to just scout out the Shadow Fiend. There's the shackle into the trees, plus the power shot, but she's in a very, very exposed territory. Shadow Fiend going for the ultimate. It's going to be able to kill off the Weaver. People often are, underestimate the burst damage of this. Axe now trying for the Donk and is going to get it. Overextension does not pay off in this particular game. Not against a lineup as punishing as this. But Axe having a good time on this. Having a really, really good time. Avoid us right now. Still just trying to farm up. Um, I'm actually Slark leading the CS board. Just uh, trying to get his name back out there. And He's been uh, in the woods for quite some time. Looks like he wants to go for Shadow Blade, which is a good choice. There's the uh, amulet for it. And now... Ursa caught out in dangerous territory. He doesn't have an overpower ready. There's the Axe Donk as well. Nice little combo. I didn't even see the Omni Knight actually rotating in, but he was there. <laughs> oh, the trash talk coming out. Fucking two spell. This Ursa is overextending quite a lot. He is gaining too much confidence and is paying the price for it. So currently, what everybody just needs to do is to calm down and start to farm, because that's the only thing that Slark is doing, and I, I unfortunately, I believe in this guy. They're forgetting about everything that he is, and now we might see a fight here up against Shadow Fiend and Axe, managing to find the Wind Ranger. There is no Berserker's Call, however, because the Blink Dagger was not but ready. But yeah, Slark, pretty much the only hero as of right now who's actually trying to um, accomplish something very, very late Midas out from Dusa. That was a 19 minute Midas. Has died six times with 53 last hits, so. Wow. And now I've got a point in the mana shield, but her mana pool is not big enough for it to make a difference, at least not as of right now. We do have a small little fight there. Weaver, he, does ha he did have a time lapse. Should have probably used it. Because as of right now, he is within Donkin range of Axe, or Donkin territory. He's trying to run away, he did juke him quite badly. And with the max level in the Sakuchi, he should be able to relatively easy. Now might actually be going for the counter kills here. They are surrounding him pretty much, and he's just going to get stuck right in the middle of it. Oh, not paying attention to his time on the Sakuchi at all. Could have just time lapsed out of there once he sensed danger. Dead and now Slark actually getting a uh, quite a decent amount of kills and farming very very efficiently you know, getting a blade of alacrity which is probably gonna get turned into a Sanj oh, sorry Yasha but up on top lane there is a void pushing who's also been farming relatively decently it is not absolutely amazing but he's been absent for a little while and the battle fury is uh, it's a difficult item to farm and you're not really like example when you're um, Farming for Vladimir Softing, you have a lot of small items which are going to give you a very, very quick benefit. When you're farming for a Battle Fury, you don't have a whole lot of small items. And those items don't really give you a whole lot. Like, as 
individual items, they're not very good. It's only when they come together, and I just increase my mouse sensitivity by way too much. It's only when they start to come together that it actually starts to pay off with the Battle Fury. There is an Ur Ursa is once again going for the Roshan, actually just going straight Basher. As of right now, his farm, his gold per minute is the highest of anybody in the map as of right now, but Axe following close by and is actually going to get Chrono up on top lane. Void trying to handle him, they do have the Tower of Hell, but Weaver, I have no clue why he just walks straight into that Chrono. There is the double donk out from Axe and him. Double kill will be on his name. Now the counter rotation is coming in from Enigma. He's managing to find two inside the black hole. And that should be at least one kill for the Windranger. Maybe even two if she's lucky. She was. Enigma is gonna... Is gonna pay with his life. And Ursa just coming in as a right now. Really, really cocky up against three heroes. Dusa gonna fall super fast. I go now to off the back of this. So they are gonna trade off. three for three in the end here so fight pretty much evening out actually slightly in the advantage of the dire side seeing the fact that windranger is less farmed than shadowfiend but yeah dusa not having a good game as of right now she's 071 only got her hands on the perseverance 22 minutes in and went for a 19 minute minus so the all carry strat is not really working <laughs> And she is responsible for, once again, a bit more than two thirds or one third of the uh, of the deaths on this team. Then, nevertheless, we have the Ursa <coughs> getting his hands on Basher, getting Link Dagger, doing relatively good, I should say. As of right now, really just playing cocky though, and now. Weaver is going to be in a lot of trouble, and there's the donk once again from Max. He's on an unstoppable streak. His donkin has been amazing. He is goddamn Kobe Bryant. The donking has been insane, and now he's going to get his hands on a Wind Ranger, even. Is it going to come prematurely? There it is. Yikes. Now Ursa coming in very, very offensively. There is no blade mail up and available, but. He should fall as well. There it is. That's actually the Aegis dropping, so he could just go in like that. But the trouble is, now it's turn number two, and I'm just getting my chat window. It's going to get spammed. Ursa trying for the kills. The Donk is not there, but they do manage to find the kill in the end. So easy pickings there. And nice little turnaround. Axe getting a lot of kills to his name. The Donk and Legend, the Kobe Bryant of Dota. Really taking names. Weaver up on top lane, just try to get his hands on the perseverance. Remember, that was the guy it all started on. He got caught, and then everybody just went in one by one. And we apparently have some trash talk coming in once again. There's the Crimson Guard actually out on X. That is quite a nice setup to have. That is pretty darn good. Um, actually, up against most of this stuff, it's gonna happen to, like, um... Because it's DOT, the Midnight Pulse, it's gonna reduce that damage by a decent amount. Windranger is not gonna be having a terribly good time. And Weaver is building Lincolns. Not really sure if it's gonna matter all that much. Nice sense reward there, revealing the Shadow Fiend, and he's gonna get picked off super easily. And now Void, wanting to go for the Chrono, only going to find the Omni Knight. This is not something I don't think they want to counter-initiate in on. Is going to keep him al himself alive for now. There's the Black Hole Slark getting caught inside of that. And actually, the Shackles landing on the Slark as well. Where's the Donk? He might fall. That's one at least. They did manage to get a bit of redemption off of that, but X is going to fall in the end. Now the Enigma. He's actually been playing a really, really decent game as of right now. They push down mid lane. They have extended quite far. At least the Ursa has up into Dusa territory. There is the Slark with the kill. He does have a pounce in case he wants to get away, but it's going to get Shackled. That's a team wipe. And that right there should be a tier 2 tower falling. If we look at the graphs here, it's very, very... Um, it's weird. 
to say the least. It's very, very weird. This game so far has been one big giant mess of uncoordinated team fights and trash talk. And Kobe Bryant. But yeah. Enigma. Actually doing relatively decent. Doing really, really decent. And apparently these guys don't agree if it's 4 versus 6 or 5 versus 5 or what Dota is actually like. But yeah, Axe, apparently they're having like a uh, good old conversation there, the two pals, the Ursa and the Axe. It's really, really interesting to watch these guys talk together because they should be hitting each other out of their minds, but... They're just hitting the guys on their own team instead of uh, hitting each other. As of right now, Axe is the most farmed guy on the map, and he shouldn't actually be. Because the Dusa with the, um, with the Midas has not been able to even give her close to an advantage. That should increase her gold per minute by about... Um, by about 100. And there is the Ursa going back in on the Omni Knight. Shackles is on the Axe. He is too tanky to deal with that, though. But is having trouble coping with a lot of its slug. Now getting caught. Not really, actually, just managing to get out with the Shadow Dance and the Shadow Blade, but that right there should be Axe Fallen again. They're playing way, way too aggressively up in this. They cannot afford to lose too much. Think Ursa wanted to go for Roshan, but there's still another two minutes, my man. And it is true, Axe has actually died six times, so... Shadow Fiend looking like he's going for a Scotty. This guy's a confident farmer. As of right now, his net worth is... Not super amazing, it's okay. It's decent at least for this game. Experience per minute wise, if I could find it, he's actually on top. And now re aiming to get himself some bug for uh, bug for dinner. He's just gonna back off for now, just hanging out the Weaver, who has not been showing any signs of actually using his time match correctly, unfortunately. Plus he's been, the, he's 988, which is not really all that good. Void still just farming up, has gotten his hands on a Battle Fury. I like the patience, but he is falling behind slightly. And there should not be any fights for the Axe is still there. He's pretty much been the initiator of, it, of all the fights. Dusa is getting an ultimate orb to her, so there's the Lincoln's pretty much done. Windranger is apparently a noob as well. And now, they do manage to get their hands on the Shadow Fiend. Down on bottom lane. And there was actually a Chrono committed. Up against the Slark, but they did not manage to get their hands on it, but Slark should pretty much fall as it right now. There's just not enough attack speed, but there is the power shot. Right to the face, able to take him out. Axe, tangling with the Weaver, I don't think that's a good thing to do. Now, Enigma though, is within Donkin Rage, but Axe is going to get caught. Is actually going to counter Helix right out of the ulti. Wow, that was quite fortunate for him. And Dusa, oh, the unfortunate shackle there. Now Ursa can really go ham on these two, able to get a double kill off the back of this. And Vegas running out and away, really trying to get back out. The Blink Dagger is not available, as it should be. Or as it shouldn't be. Just gonna try for the Weaver. It's actually gonna force him to time lapse. I'm not entirely sure he did have the upper hand, but Blink Dagger, or Wind Ranger using the Blink Dagger to her advantage and taking the uh, lead and experience for a minute. Nice little initiation there and Dusa once again completely getting screwed over. And the trash talk individually like on, on each other is just downright weird. But it's like now with the Sanjin Yasha, which is always something. And Dusa complaining, uh, complaining about lack of wards. Apparently, if you want out of wards, um, I'm not really sure what this point was. If you run out of wards, feel free to buy one from us. All right. So this is just pure desperation. Coming off from this, this is starting to get kind of hilarious, but also a little bit annoying. Weaver, getting forced back. These guys are not playing really good Dota. The trash talk is just too unreal. He is going to try to chase him. They do manage to find the Weaver. There is a Shadow Fiend up and available. 
the time lapse is there in case he wants it, using a bit prematurely in my eyes. And does have actually the Lincolns to his use. I'm not sure what he was doing. He was just chopping down trees for a second there. Slaughter. I don't think you want to jump in on this. There is an Enigma. He does not have a black hole available, but he is still a threat. Ursa, wanting to catch out the Slark, now turning his attention towards the Shadow Fiend. There is still a Weaver in the area. He should not even fall. Getting shackled. We do we are fighting on two fronts as of right now. Slark is not gonna make it back out of this one. And Void. Just sitting there with an invis rune. Wants to go for at least a kill here. Does have a nice little shadow fiend to worry about. There's a couple of good bashes there, plus the shackles and the kill. And just an overusage of spells. But he is the only one with two ultimate orbs, so. And they're actually warding. If they could de-ward that one, Medusa would get so mad. I know people like this. I have played with people like this. It is the easiest thing in the world to piss them off. Ax sitting on 2k gold might want to try to actually might want to try to build for Weaver. Now gonna find a faceless void. Remember, even if the bash is due to occur to him, he is still gonna counter Helix. Now Ax is sitting there with a good old repel on him, pretty much a free BKB. There is a bounty rune. Which the Enigma decided to take. I'm not really sure why he wanted to. Because that's going to leave him vulnerable. Nice little Malphite there. And now the Weaver. Coming in maybe for the counter initiation. There are a one against three as of right now. They could definitely easily turn it. If they wanted to. And Weaver actually just going to try to out damage the uh, Deuce's health. The Axe. Could jump him. Not really sure why he wasn't. Ursa. Now might get caught out of position here. He's finding two... Hero's gonna go on the Dusa at first, and then she is gonna fall quite easily. Now the BKB, good juke there from Max, actually forcing it out. And Omni Knight just chilling in the trees. Oh, the Shackle, they managed to find him. Super, super unfortunate. And now the Enigma with the Pulse. Ax, one Donk, the champion of Donks, is gonna retreat back out. Shadow Fiend gonna go for the ultimate right on top of the Wind Ranger. Weaver is still just sitting there. It's gonna pop a Lincoln's honor. And there it is. Slug able to get the kill. Now the Weaver is running for his life. There is no blink available. It's slowing down. Ursa trying to fight off the back of this. Weaver actually landing it on Weaver. Very, very unfortunate for him. So the reinitiation on that, but might have wanted to stay out of it. Void finding the axe. There is no counter helix inside the chrono. So he's gonna fall. Now we'll say a uh, godlike streak for Ursa. Holy hell. Holy hell, this guy's doing damage. This guy is doing damage. I am not entirely sure what this guy is onto, but the grass are just way too unreliant at this or unreliable at this point. Or just yeah, the experience permit because they keep changing. I mean usually you have <coughs> one guy who carries the team, but these guys are pretty much just trying to to all outdo each other. Which is not team play, that's just insanity. And Ursa trying to fight through backdoor protection. I'm not entirely sure you're able to do that, two guys, and with one of them with no mana. They do have a creep wave in a few. Down on mid lane, we are seeing a bit of an engagement here. The Weaver wanting to go on the Omni Knight. The damage, though, is actually unreal out in this Weaver. He's doing very, very high amount, especially with that Chrys Crystalis. Let's just start coming, to it, coming into effect. But there is the creep wave arriving and arriving, arriving, and that should be a pretty easy tower to take. I don't think they want to try to defend it. Just staying focused on the middle lane until bottom lane or top lane reaches high ground. There is no rush back coming available. He took it not too long ago. Axe really going aggressive, actually finding the Ursa. That could be trouble though. There is an Enigma bit available if you want to go for the black hole. It's not gonna just yet. He does have three heroes. Trapped inside of it. Now four. There's the black hole, but it's going to get cancelled, unfortunately. Slark taking out that Enigma. Ursa in it for round two. They really want to get their hands on him. It's going to be able to X. Actually getting the... Oh, Faces Void get, or uh, Shadowfiend getting the Void. And Shadowfiend also taking that uh, Ursa Godlike streak. He's got his Scotty now. And there's the... Um, there's the career to prove it. 
or it can prove it in a second. But yeah, Dusa is still only sitting on a Lincoln Sphere. Ring of Aquila, her net worth is uh, close to the lowest. Just surpassed Shadow Fiend for some reason. Um, I would say that he is worth a lot more at this point, but they're just neck and neck, pretty much everybody. As you can see, it's only separated by about a thousand from the uh, lowest to the highest. Pretty much. You know, Ursa has just taken off and Enigma and um, Omni Knight are the supports of these teams. So they're not expected to get a whole lot of fun. But other than that, they're pretty much neck and neck. And you can see it's switching around all the time. So this is a game of trying to outdo each other and less of a game and less less a game of uh, trying to actually team play some Dota. And now X managing to find the Wind Ranger. If they could get her hands on her, that would be absolutely incredible. There is actually the, um, I'm not entirely sure what broke, what them, what actually broke it, broke the Lincolns. But there is actually the Shackles on the Axe, managing to find the Wind Ranger. Oh, gonna miss the Donk, very, very unfortunate. He's not gonna be having that for a while. Gonna try to out -juke them. Does not actually have backup on any level. People just abandoned him. So should not be able to actually make his way out of this one. There is an Omni Knight though to help out his cause, but might actually want to try. There is some, at least a repel on him, but that's going to prevent the purification from taking into effect. Weaver really trying trying to chase down this Omni Knight. He does have it for himself now. Dusa, I don't think you want to go in on this. I don't think you want to. There's an Ursa, and he's still mad. And there's a beautiful, beautifully executed Chronosphere from the uh, Faces Warrior, but did forget to trigger his Mask of Madness. And now the Shadow Fiend coming in with an Invis, with, in with the Shadow Blade and just taking out everybody. Getting a triple kill before dying himself. Wow. And that fight was pretty much as even as it gets. Slightly, a slight advantage on the experience for Radiant side. And now it's like wanting to get the Enigma might be too much for him. Remember, that would not be a very, very good trade. Don't think he wants to try to tangle with, the, with an Ursa. It's actually going to attempt it anyway. He does have a Shadow Blade in 5 seconds. And there is a Regen Rune available. If he can Shadow Blade out of there, that would be absolutely amazing. It is, it is actually cancelled. The Regen Rune. To his disappointment. But Ursa just... Actually getting his hands on the Abyssal Blade here. We'll probably finish some other item first. Because he is not the tankiest guy on the block, so... Maybe try to get himself a, a Yasha or something. Not be that bad. Maybe not entirely a Yasha, I don't often play Ursa, but I know Yasha is an okay item in pretty much all agility heroes. Or Heart. Heart would be okay because they don't really have a tank. Weaver's not very, very tanky. Enigma is of course not very tanky. Faces Wards and Intel heroes just fucked up, fucked itself and just went for everything else. Ursa's pretty much their tank on this team and he doesn't even have he doesn't have a blade mail, he doesn't have a heart, he doesn't have anything to tank with. Only a uh, semi-okay amount of armor, which is not very amazing. And Omni not getting his hands on one of those rare bounty runes. This carry is usually taken. There's the Reaver. Plus the heart of Tarask. Up from Axon. He's got his, uh... He's got his heart. It's done. It's done and dealt with. So... Face this void, actually starting to amp up his damage and his attack speed. Still not very amazing, but with the Mask of Madness, he should be able to. Chances, if they want to go for him, I don't think they want to. They are chasing with the Shadow Blade here, Slark. If they can get the pounce on him, that would be super good, but there is a Chrono up and available. And Harry finds him. Is the pounce going to be there? There it is. Where is the Chrono Sphere? He's taking a hefty amount of damage. It's just going to try to do it for a retreat Chrono. Could probably just have uh, healed up off the back of them. And there's the ultimate coming in from Enigma. Ursa deciding to join in as well as the Wind Ranger. He's got to find one kill and there's the second out on Axe. This is not looking good for the Radiant. This Ursa is getting out of hand. And getting himself another Morbid Mask is one even more lifesteal. I'm not entirely sure why. He's pretty much sitting on top of the world as of right now. The thing he's vulnerable to is Disables. And they don't really have a whole lot of them. They don't have anything that disables him totally. Totally rules him out. And that's the thing that they gotta get. 
Zed Basher and Slug would not be a bad call, but he's going for Scotty as of right now. Shadow Fiend. Oh, actually, Wind Ranger. Catching a Medusa there is not gonna be able to kill her as of right now. Did get her hands on a um, on an Eagle Song. Probably gonna turn that into a butterfly. But yeah, they're just gonna back out as of right now. I'm not really sure what good that's gonna do for her. The butterfly. She could use a bit of health. She could. She would be a good Scotty candidate this game, but they have a lot of Scotties and they have a lot of stats on that team, so it's probably not for her. And there's a finding Rojan. <coughs> Was pretty much just anticipating that. Probably has a, a timer or something. Now I'm gonna try for the easy Roshan. That should fall relatively fast. Actually, he's just sold his Vladimir's offering and gone for him as a Dominator instead. If he does have anything on crew, actually has a Daedalus. And now the cheese out on Ursa. So it's just gonna eat the cheese and take the ages. And there's a bottle on the ground. Just casual little bottle. Every coin helps. Now down on bottom lane, the Weaver is getting into big into things way bigger than himself. Ursa. Now jumping in very, very aggressively. If they can get a disable in on him, that would be absolutely amazing. But Axe is up on top lane. Actually doing stuff of his own. Trying to get his hands on the void. There's a Chronosphere up and available, and this got to pop it just to get away. Don't think he can actually chase that. Meanwhile, down the bottom lane, the Gaze has finally caught out the Ursa. They managed to get him. That is first. And now the Enigma is also going to fall. Just to the sheer damage, Dusa is going to go down. And now Ursa going to come in for round two. Shadow Fiend. Just gonna wander out of there, but it should pretty much all be on the Omni Knight, and he's gonna fall super fast to this Ursa. His damage is unreal. Oh, that last though. Wind Ranger, you're a little scumbag. I'm not really too much for that laugh. It just makes her look seem absolutely hysterical. And in the sense of crazy hysterical. Void getting his hands on a Daedalus, so his damage per second is relatively decent. The issue is that he does have an Ursa on his team, and Ursa and Void don't really synergize all that well together because of the Chrono, and the Ursa likes to get up close. But does synergize well decently with the rest of the team, so... Not all that bad axe. Now getting Abyssal Blade, and there's not really a whole lot of damage coming out from the Ursa, no overpower. And he is actually taking quite a lot of damage to the Lincoln Sphere. Ouchie axe. Getting caught by that one. Weaver back in the fray. Actually buying back and time-lapsing. Nice little move there, but if he gets caught, if he gets killed once again, that could be a lot of trouble for him. And there's the axe. Just gonna casually take that kill. Weaver. So Kruchi is gonna run out. Actually, they spend a, they put a lot of attention on the, under that Wind Ranger, and Ursa just uh, took care of a, a middle lane tower. Just playing his chances, and there's the recipe for the Satanic, and he should be able to pick up the... Uh, the actual Reaver very, very soon. And that's going to make it even, even more terrifying. Because that's going to increase his health and in turn his enrage. So, ouchie. Oh, the Weaver. Getting not caught just yet, but very, very close to a slug pounces that he could actually get himself in trouble. Start getting the double damage from Harbor, and that, that was... Was he ever, was he ever there, the Enigma? He just disappeared. Oh, but the secret shop, they know he's there. Very, very early Berserker's call. Very unfortunate there for the Void. He does have an escape chrono in case he needs it. Actually, just gonna go into the trees. Yeah, they know he's there. Oh, super close. Super, super close. And Void, of course, not able to attack, so they can't really reveal until he does have the time walk, but they can spend so much time on him. Now Slark, gonna jump onto the Weaver, the, who does have a time lapse available, and there it is, Slark just gonna run out in the way, it's just a test of strength, and avoid gonna be able to jump back out to safety. Actually, now getting tangled once again, the Slark is gonna run back out again. And Dusa has actually been getting a lot of free farm lately, which means that she has been able to save up for that butterfly. Now Shadow Fiend is just gonna Burst the crap out of this void. Ouchie. Not even not even a backtrack, just ow. And Slark getting his hands on his own Scotty, so his farm is it's still very terrible. That took him way too long to actually uh, to actually farm. His net worth is currently the lowest of all the carries. 
and he does have about 6k, which is about a butterfly, up to, um, up to Ursa, which is not a lot if you put some time into farming. Axe getting, he did get his heart a while ago, I'm just completely baffled by it. The satanic out on Ursa, excuse me, is up and available void. Is looking to uh, get his hands on the Mjolnir very, very, very soon, and he is closing it on being six slot. He just needs uh, a few more items, and then he's there. A few more big items. Might want to turn that uh, power shots, pair of power shots into something else. Axe counter helixing like a pro, and there's the stone gaze in from Dusa. I actually make it out for now. Oh wow, they do have the perfect counter up against uh, up against the Ursa. We were trying for the chase. Axe able to blink to blink back out. I cannot believe they didn't get that they didn't get that axe and now the tables might have turned. Slug coming back in. There is no backup for him, however. There is a very, very low Ursa without anything, and there's the Don coming in from Axe. And the Gemma True side as well is on the ground. Terrible execution there by Team Dyer. Holy hell. And the Weaver actually being considered a dieback. Almost, at least. Almost. He is going to get the extended... Um, the extended re respawn time. Slark now has the gem. He might want to consider dropping that back off in base. Because if they get their hands on it again, he could be in trouble. Could be useful to have on the Omni Knight just for the second warding, but... Of course it isn't. He's melee. But yeah, Void now getting his hands on the Mjolnir and Axe getting an Aghanim Scepter. So he's able to donk whenever he wants and it's not a whole that big of a deal if he misses it. Plus, the Scepter Threshold is higher, so... And actually the Chronosphere getting popped on the Deuce able to tank quite a lot of that, but once the Mana Shield is drained, she's gone. And actually able to pick up a double kill off the back of that. The Omni Knight is gonna fall as well. We did fall as well. Oh! Unfortunate ward there, excuse me. It's been a long day. It's been a long day in the uh, in the world of Frozor. Shadow Fiend. Now wanting to get all the damage. It's only going to cancel the ulti. It is a haste of wind runner we're dealing with however there. That's not easy to hit an ulti when you're stationary. Up against somebody like that, so... Good time they're cancelling it. But yeah, Axe jumping in on way too many. It's gonna get stunned and Faces Void is gonna be able to make it back out. That did seem like the perfect ex or initiation here starting out. Slark now in pursuit is maybe gonna find the Void. There is no time walk available and the black hole, the rescue black hole. And now the turnaround. The Slark, he's dead. And now the Shadow Fiend. Getting moldered and pounded as well. There's a gem of true side on the ground, and now it's the trouble with it. And Medusa, of course, just got pounded up there. But the gem, the gem of true side back on Weaver, and now it's a terrible disaster for the Slark. So now they're on the back foot again. They're three up. Of course, acts very, very good up against this, uh, or at least in this style, of, in this type of game, when you're fighting uphill. That is when. Um, Axe is best at the defense at defense like this. He is repelled. Where's the jump? Does find the Ursa. Might want to have the Omni Knight come in with some damage. Damage reduction there with the Guardian Angel. Or just damage immunity. Ursa. They really want to get him. And there's the donk on him. Holy hell. The Stone Gaze. The Ursa getting greedy. And that's one. And that's almost all oh, the ultimate. Very, very unfortunate. The little faceless void coming in at exactly the right time now. Axe wanting to get his hands on him, but he's gonna dodge it with the time walk. They do have eyes on though. They did have eyes on. And they don't realize. They have a horde of creeps charging in on their bottom towers. And faceless void actually. I'm thinking he could really go for counter initiation, but this gonna use the time walk to manage to get back out again. Blade mail is up in two seconds. There's an Enigma. There's the Malphys. We can get a proper. There it is. The proper Berserker's Call. But it's getting no counter helixes off the back of this. Or just chopping away at him and an easy pickings. 
and buyback from X. I would not have bought back there. But yeah, Medusa starting to do some work. Does have 3.2k HP or not k HP, k gold in the bank, and it's actually doing decently at least compared to the slug on uh, net worth. And she had a couple of good stone gazes to try to, to try to redeem herself. But Void and Ursa, they're not unstoppable though. The Void is closing in on it, but Ursa is having trouble coping with the damage. Which is the problem. Weaver is going to time lapse out of that for you. There's a Roshan up and available, and he's probably looking to take it. I would love to say that he could, but this is not a very far in Weaver. This is not a very far in Weaver at all. He had the perfect early game, but just screwed it up in the late game. Has been partaking in a lot, but has not really mounted to anything now. First, I think he wants to get his hands on that Aegis. Plus, the Weaver is going to pro probably take the cheese. Depends if he's going to be greedy or not. Now, Void jumping in. Who's going to get the Aegis, though? That is the question. Void going to take the Aegis, and Ursa going to have to make do with the cheese. I would actually say that's probably the better decision to have it on Void. Just because, you know, the damage I'll put on him is starting to overcome the damage I'll put on Ursa. He's only level 23. He's the one you want to keep alive. He's the one you want to ride this game off. Because Ursa has run out. The time of the right clicks is over. Now it's the controlled right clicks. And he has a bigger shot up against Axe. And that blade mail. A better shot at least. Because that's the man you want to pass by. Actually, Dusa taking the lead on net worth on Radiant Team has been doing quite a good job of farming back up. Partly due to that Midas. Her GPM is still not very good, but it's at least better than Shadow Fiends, but by only one. It's better than Slugs by 50, 60, 70, sorry. But yeah, SF has done the, um, the classic mistake of forgetting about the... Um, Okay, it does stack with lifesteal. I'm sorry. I keep forgetting that as well. But yeah. Scotty does stack with lifesteal. I was thinking Desolator there for a second. Um, but nevertheless. The push is imminent from top. We might see an attempt to defend this. There is no Slark home. He's got to get back super fast. It's going to go fast as a race car. Try to get back. And it's going to heal up on the way. He's actually sitting on quite a decent amount of health this axe. And there's the Chronosphere. Only gonna land on one, the Medusa. And Ursa even get a caught there as well as the Void. This is a disaster for him. There's the black hole. Gonna catch three. Enigma, perfect black hole there. But is it gonna be enough? Medusa falling. Enigma has gone down, but it doesn't really matter all that much. Now Ursa going down as well. There is a Weaver. Also in trouble there. Slark might be going on the wrong target. They did not see him on the Invis, but... Void falling second time as well. Very, very good defense. Wind Ranger trying to get rid of that axe, but it's just not going to be able to. The damage is just too much. The team fight is too good. They have the black hole to initiate everything, and they have the chronosphere. But that right there was a perfect stone gaze from Medusa, and Void just completely falling into the trap. Now X doesn't care about the creep waves. Just wants to push. I don't think they have the time though. There is no buyback on him, however. And now Slark getting his hands on it, hands on his own basher. Which would be nice for him seeing the fact that he's not been having all that good of a game. And farm wise he's not doing super well. Act or actually Void taking the lead on last sets with three hundred and something. Three hundred and twelve. Between the uh, Wind Ranger taking, sitting on the lowest spot. But his highest on experience per minute. But that is pretty much irrelevant as of right now, as everybody is tw level 25. So, what matters now is net worth. That is the thing that matters. How much are you worth? That would be a good title of a game show. How much are you worth? But uh, nevertheless, the axe is pretty much. Um, done with what he needs to do except for the pair of BOTs that he is inevitably gonna inevitably inevitably gonna buy 
my English is not happy about me today. And I'm not going to be any better tomorrow because basically I do well after I've had English classes. We've spoken some kind of English during the day. And I haven't today, so. That's that's just a fact. That's when I do best. If, it's, if I have like half an hour of warm up, that's when my English does work out the best. There is a Faces Ward actually going for the BKB, so he's going to be 6 slotted very, very soon. The TP is going to actually get cancelled there. Alex able to wander out. Weaver has done the weird thing of going for damage when there isn't any. Like trying to go for the crits when he doesn't have any damage. I would say a Desolator in this particular game would be absolutely incredible. Um, at least for the sake of the push. He does have a Lincoln Sphere. A Daedalus. Demon Sedge. Might want to try to turn that into a uh, an MKB. It's probably what it's going to get turned into. And Ursa actually falling slightly behind on the net worth. Uh, currently Shadow Fiend catching up to him really, really well. Does have the Daedalus on his side and is doing that one heck of a lot of damage. Would probably benefit from a Butterfly, I would say. Because even though he has 2.6k HP, at this point it's not really all that much. The Weaver has 2, and he has no health items whatsoever. Only a Bracer. And Wind Ranger thinking smart, getting the MKB, that's going to help her out significantly up against the Dusa. Um, the weird thing is that he mentioned himself, Ursa, he mentioned the Abyssal Blade, but there hasn't been any. There has been no Abyssal Blade. And Void actually close, very, very close to his uh, BKB. That's going to help him out a lot, at least. Is not all that much because that is magic damage. I just confused myself with the fact that it was physical there for a second, but it is magic damage. But there is a lot of physical damage, that's the issue coming out from this team. So this is not the best BKB game. If it was to be anything, it would be up against the stone gaze. But the amount of physical damage just coming out from these teams and Ursa actually getting chased off here, Dusa popping the stone gaze. If she catches the Ursa, is not going to, but it's going to be able to slow him enough to make it an issue. Slug jumping in on him. There is Shadow Blade available for him. Plus, the Lucky Bash is there up against the Ursa. It's going to fall relatively easily, but the Enigma with the Black Hole there, everything going down on Ursa. Shadow Fiend wanting to try for the ultimate, but they're going to find Void as well. This is a disaster for the Dire side. And they just got to push straight for the... Uh, Straight racks. They're thinking too much about kills. Axe making mistakes here. He wants to go for th towers. And the Wind Ranger. Now she becomes dangerous. At least up against something like this. Shadow Fiend. Again going for kills. Which is not what you want to do. I mean you have the shot to actually um, push in a bit. I think that right there was a buyback from Ursa. He is going to try to make use of that. But I don't think it's going to really matter. Shadow Fiend. I'm not really sure what the guy wanted up there. But... Did take one hell of a lot of time, and there's the ulti cancelled. Kaboom. Ursa. Just jumping in with the Abyssal Blade, so that fight can completely turn around. Just... Dumb decision making. You should have gone straight for towers. Kill is greed, towers is goodness. Like Lotus said, um, it's the game, Dota is not about kills. Or farm. It's about pushing the towers. I'm Kill, like killing the enemy's ancient. That's what Dota is about. Farming and everything else is merely a tool to get there. And if you have the shot, you gotta take it. That's pretty much Dota. That is uh, Dota for dummies. Take the enemy's throne when you have the shot. And they had the shot to at least take a tier 3. And didn't do it. I'd say maybe a Desolator would actually not do that bad on Shadow Fiend. Of course, that would not stack. Um, he did spend the money on the eye, on an eye of the Scotty, but I mean, look at this. Wind Ranger, that should reduce her already low um, armor. That's going to actually do minus armor on her, and she has... Yeah, 2300, that's not going to be a whole lot. Ursa, not the strongest guy in armor, and likewise is the Void. And Nygma just would complete, get completely obliviated by it. By it. So that would definitely be a good choice. I'm not really sure what these guys are saving up for. They're having so much money. And they're, they should be in the plus on buybacks by, yeah, 3k. 
about actually do so doing the best on the last hits as of right now. Still two fifteen sixteen. But has come back in this game by quite a lot. And Omni Knight still sitting on Arcane Boots. Now getting the first death of Wizardry for his uh Aghanim Scepter, but of course he doesn't really need any more than this. It's pretty much get an axe and be done with it. And my throat is hurting severely at this point. We're 61 minutes in into this game and they're trying for a weaver here. They should not be able to catch him if he jukes correctly, which he did. Jukes into the trees and I have to go get some water. Or not go get some water, just take some water from the uh, Mountain Dew bottle right next to me. No product placement intended. But yeah, nevertheless. Slarky. Oh, the Enigma. Now coming in. If he can get a good black hole, and he is able to. Gonna catch out two. Almost gonna catch out three. It's gonna get cancelled, though. There's the Dawn coming out from Axe. And there should be a blink right there, right now. It's gonna be able to trap him. No second Donk. Jumping in is the faceless board, but the blade mail was up for Max and actually do so doing a semi decent amount of damage as well. Now going toe to toe with the Ursa, just healing up off from this Dusa. This is really, really weird. Shadowfee not helping out whatsoever, just going for the Weaver. Really, really greedy play. Dusa is gonna fall now. Omni Knight coming in should possibly just try to see if he can take the um, yeah, take that gem and just run the fuck out of there. Just a good old GTFO, but he's not going to be able to. There's a gem on the ground. Which she does not have the inventory space for, so that's that. <laughs> There's no inventory space, should just try to defend it for now, but... Super greedy play by Shadow Fiends, just trying to go for the uh, for the two kills when he should have helped out the Dusa, take out the Ursa, and then they could have turned all their attention towards that Weaver. Because he was not doing much. He was not doing much. And now Medusa is going to be going up against this little Wind Ranger here. Might want to try to toggle your split shot off because that is going to am amplify your damage by a semi decent amount. Of course, only has the Scotty for damage, so damage on Dusa as of right now is not that high. She, m she m or uh, now that I think about it, Void might have been falling like so fast because of the Shadow Fiend. I did see the fact that he was attacking him. Now, Wind Ranger. Just gonna decide to not care about the stone gaze. Did she get she did actually get the wind run off? Oh my word. Gotcha. She got the wind run off before the um the stone gaze. So they were not able to hit her. Good well played. Very, very well played. And actually, um she's now in charge of the net worth. Whereas Ursa has just fallen off to the behind here. Now jump in. From Faces of Void, not gonna mount to anything at all. But yeah, she's done. Almost. Once she gets her hands on the pair of power or your BOTs, she's done. Faces of Void, now almost getting taken out. There it is. Not even a Don coming out from Axe. There it is. Double kill for Axe. But yeah, he's, uh, he's falling off on it as well now, Axe. Even though he has 26 kills. Um, he's got to start looking into other items than the Crimson Guard, I would say. Start looking into more hearts. Become more tanky. I love hearts, by the way. They're amazing. They increase everything that makes Axe Axe. And we were going to be able to get our hands on Immortality and going to leave the cheese for the Dusa. Or for the, not for the Dusa, for the Ursa. I would say that's not really that good of a choice. It does give him a chance to time lapse a bit more efficiently, but. Not anything other than that. And Ursa not making an impact anymore as much as he was earlier. I mean, his, his time is up unless he can really get some um, get some damage back in there. Again, the BKB was not a particularly good choice. On his side. What did he sell? Did sell his boots. Now going actually for power treads. I'm not really sure what all of this is about. But selling something that makes you faster for something that makes you slower. And literally no difference at this point. Divine Rapier pickup from Shadow Fiend. That was what the bastard was saving up for. This is a risky play. This could both lose and win them the game. If he doesn't reveal it. 
he cannot reveal until the next fight. He just can't. Now you see, that would be a combination I would say that a BKB would be good in. Just for that teeny tiny extra bit of survivability. He cannot reveal that. If they have the element of surprise with the uh, Divine Rapier, they can win this game. Because his damage is just too unreal. At this point, I'm not even maxed up with the souls, but it doesn't really do a whole lot more. Oh, just off. Just off there. With the Berserker's Call. Very, very close. And these bo both of these teams are playing super passive. As of right now. Necromastery. Out oh, from, um... Actually... Granting him. I'm, I'm still kind of, uh... Considering Shadowfiend. Never mind, I'm just gonna hang to that, onto that spot. Because now Axe going in. Shadowfiend taking pretty much the void in one hit. Pretty much. Very, very close to. And now on the chase for more. It, what is she gonna find? Or what is he gonna find first? First up is the Wind Ranger. That's two for him. And now, they're trying for the third. Ursa, going for the BKB. is just gonna wander out of the pounce. But it should not be enough for him because now comes Mr. Damage himself. There's the Donk coming out from Axe and that's pretty much a teamwork. Yes, Axe happened and now the greedy plays can come now. Shadow Fiend, if you want to go for a tower, this is the time. This is it. This is time to do it. It is time to be greedy now. Because there are no buybacks. And you got one weaver defending a tower with backdoor protection. But once that's down, backdoor protection will collapse. And there's the weaver. Just the, the Aegis is not even... Not even gonna help. The damage from the Shadow Fiend is just too unreal. Take a look at that. They need to get that tower. They need to work faster than this. Because they're not. They are not working fast as of right now. Slark, you gotta hit that goddamn tower. There it is. Now the backdoor protection is off. And they can start taking everything that they can. And Ursa, sad face coming out from him, bad game as well from him, he's been a non-factor in the late portions of the game. Now the Black Hole though, it's gonna catch Shadow Fiend, that should be a priority target, but apparently it isn't. And Dusa just sitting off to the back there, farming Enigmas. And there's the MKB from, off from Slark, there's the Aegis, gonna get blown, that's a middle tower. Where's the ultimate? There's the ultimate, but he's not able to do anything, and Shadow Fiend just killing him in, inside his own chrono. The amount of damage is amazing. And there's the throne gone. It's over. This is over. Ursa now coming back in. What can he do up against this? It's actually maybe gonna get his hands on the Shadow Fiend if they can get that rapier, which they just did. Ursa, you gotta pick that up, man. You should cheese. There's a rapier on the ground. There it is. Should probably turn to pick that up. Divine Rapier right next to him. He has the slot. He has it open. There is a Rapier. He hasn't even noticed it. And now, Wind Ranger taking it. And I'm not really sure why nobody picked that up. It was a Rapier sitting on the ground. Quick reflexes there by... Um, by Wind Ranger, dropping her Desolator for it. And this game might just suddenly go the other way. Because now the momentum has shifted. The Wind Ranger sitting there with the Divine Rapier and needing a pair of BOTs. Ah, oh, misclicks. Misclicks, misclicks, misclicks. But yeah, I, I was sure that right there was going to be a... Uh, was going to be a pair of BOTs. But nevertheless, we do have a fight down on mid lane. The perfect Stone Gaze. Can, almost getting the Void. Does have a BKB to be able to get back out as well as the Enigma. It's just going to use that for as an escape chrono. 
But the Wind Ranger is going to be the really exciting thing in this game because she has a lot of damage and an Aghanim Scepter with Focus Fire. The damage on her as of right now is totally insane, and even just without without the um, the Focus Fire, her attack speed is also amazing. You gotta remember that right there is the fastest you can attack. Is the Focus Fire, and take a look at that 1500 crit. That right there is a ranged uh, PA. That's what you gotta keep in mind. It's a ranged PA and Wind Ranger. I'm not really sure what she sold. Whoopsies, was something down in my left right corner trying to bug me there. Um. Oh yes, it was the Mjolnir. And now another rapier up from Shadowfiend. This guy just doesn't quit. He is, uh, he's sitting on all the money. All the money fight. Already erupting down on mid lane. Wind Ranger is going to get completely countered with this. The Black Hole, though, is able to pretty much take everybody. Omni Knight trying to see if he can make it out. Wind Ranger might fall, though. There's a rapier on the ground. A Slark unsure as what the hell to do, but Shadowfiend now coming back in with the second rapier there and this is going to be able to take everything on his own there's a rapier on the ground yep just going to have two rapiers um just going to quit your shadow blade and um considerations as to may you want to go in um should be a go at this point because you have a deuce of backing you up and you have um a thousand damage per hit pretty much with crits so yep that right there is your ursa gone in about three hits and that is 2,200 crits. <laughs> rapiers, rapiers everywhere. This is turning into more of a uh, comedic, like more of a comedy game than anything else. And that right there is GG, ladies and gentlemen. Um, also, don't forget if you have an awesome replay, um, go ahead and submit it on Reddit. For those of you who watch it, um, there is we're short on replays, so if you have something like this, just send it away. We're usually not too happy about these long games. Because it's a long time to sit down. My throat is literally killing me as of right now. But it is um, like anything under 60 minutes is awesome. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. But don't forget to don't forget to subscribe. I'm trying to build a community up around this whole thing, um, which would be so much easier if you guys subscribed. Um, it's pretty much I do it for you. All I do it for is you. Um, but anyway. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.